So in our last video we discussed about the rational expectation. What is rational expectation? And we found that the in the rational expect if the people form their expectations rationally, then only a supply shock can create divergence from the natural level of output and employment. So in this video, we will discuss the policy ineffectiveness in policy ineffectiveness under rational expectation. So here we will find that the, if the people can make proper prediction about the government policies, the government policies will be ineffective. So now we will consider the mainly the aggregate demand management policies because rational expectation theory works on the dominance of supply side. So if any government policy is there is adopted to encourage the supply side that will have definitely have effect on the economy. But here we will discuss about the ineffectiveness of aggregate demand management policies. So that's why whenever we frame the demand function, we will consider the a government policy. So G is the government policy parameter. Specifically, the aggregate demand man management policy, it may be expansionary fiscal policy, it may be expansionary monetary policy. So AG minus B into B. And here the supply function is given as as usual short run aggregate supply function y y bar plus alpha into p minus e right now without any random variable. So first we will start with the rational expectation that p equals to p actual price equals to the expected price. So what we will find y equals to y bar. So if we plot the value of y bar in this equation, y bar equals to ag minus bp or from here or p equals to ag minus y bar by b. So this we can say p equals to price, expected price equal to actual price equals to Ag minus y bar by b. Now we will introduce the shocks, and as usual, we'll consider a supply shock. So you can write a minus b y equals a g minus b y equals to y bar plus alpha into p minus p e minus b. So first of all, the p is greater than zero for a negative supply shock and b is less than zero for a positive supply shock. So what are the properties as usual as I mentioned in my previous video that its mean is zero and its variance will be constant. It is a random variable. So now we have to solve the value of P B Y. So this is A G minus P P. So now we will solve it that minus bp minus alpha p equals to y bar minus ag minus alpha p minus b or finally p equals to ag minus y bar plus alpha p e plus b whole divided by alpha plus b. 
So now we will form the expectation of it. So we will write the equation at left hand side P equals to AG minus Y bar plus alpha P plus B divided by alpha plus. We will keep it on the left hand side. So now if we form the expectation EP equals to a expected value of g minus expected value of y bar plus alpha into expected value of p plus expected value of b divided by alpha plus theta. So now if we think that this is expectation, expected price equals to A multiplied by expected public policy, G. As usual, it will be equal to natural level of unemployment, natural level of output plus alpha into expected price. And as I said, B is a random variable, its expected value will be zero. So we'll get our equation like this alpha plus b. Now if we solve it, if we solve it, alpha plus b into p e equals to a g e minus y bar plus alpha p e. So, alpha p these two will be dismissed or we can write p equals to a g minus y bar divided by b. So now we'll plot this value of expected price in this equation. So from here we can write, I'll keep it left right hand side and write it here P equals to A G minus B divided by so A G minus Y bar divided by B. So if we plot the value now P equals to A G minus Y bar plus alpha into a g minus y bar divided by b plus g whole divided by so p equals to a b into a g minus b y bar plus alpha into a into g e minus alpha y bar plus b into b whole divided by alpha plus b into Now we have to take the value of, so we can make it short, that P equals to BAG plus BAG minus alpha plus B into Y bar plus B into G, all divided by B into alpha plus now from this value of P, we will subtract the value of P to get the difference between actual price and expected price. So finally, P minus P equals to B into alpha plus B B A G plus 
ask B A G E plus sorry minus alpha plus beta into y bar plus d v minus so ultimately b a g plus b a g e minus alpha plus b into y bar plus b into d minus alpha plus beta into alpha plus b into a g minus sorry plus alpha plus b into y bar so first what you can see these two will be dismissed So last divided by B into alpha plus G. So first these two will be dismissed. So we can write B into so P minus P into B into A into G minus B into So that equals to B A G minus G E So these two will be dismissed and finally what we see here that P actual price minus expected price equals to BA into G minus GE divided by B into alpha plus B divided by B into alpha plus B plus B V divided by B into alpha plus B. Now what was your first time what did I say that what we are about to prove that if the change in government expenditure or change in public policy is perfectly expected that means if they can rationally predict about the behavior of the public policy change, then we can write G equals to G. And finally, again P minus P will be given by V divided by alpha plus B. So this is just like our previous model. And that's why what we can write Y equals to y bar plus alpha p minus p e plus b so sorry alpha p e minus b 
So we can write y minus y is what equals to alpha into d divided by p d divided by alpha plus beta alpha plus b minus b. So that equals to minus b v divided by alpha plus b. So again we see that if government expenditure, the change in the public policy is properly predicted by the people, then what we see that there will be divergence from the national level of output only if D is non-zero. That means either there is a negative supply shock or there is a positive supply shock. So if V is positive, that means we consider a negative supply shock, the output, actual output will be less than the natural level of output and vice versa. And second thing, if we consider the cyclical unemployment, we have already used Dawkins law in our last video, that again we can write that Y minus Y bar equals to minus of alpha B, alpha into beta into u minus un. So, un equals to minus b into b divided by alpha plus b. And again, if we consider that there is no supply shock, b equals to zero, that means we will finally get u minus un equals to zero or u equals to un. There will be no cyclical unemployment. So if there is a negative supply shock, then you will be greater than UN. Negative supply shock means that V is positive. So you will be greater than UN. Cyclical unemployment will be positive. Or if there is a negative su positive supply shock, then you will be less than UN. And if there is no supply shock or supply side disturbance in the economy, then you will be exactly equal to UN. So output and employment, if there is, so two things, if the people can make proper prediction about the government policy changes and if the people can make proper prediction about the price, so if there is rational expectation under the existence of rational expectation, if the government policy is properly predicted, policy change is properly predicted, then the output and employment will remain at their respective natural levels. So policy, any type of illegal demand management policy will be completely ineffective if the people can predict it properly. So this explains about the ineffectiveness of the aggregate demand management policy by the government under the assumptions of rational expectation. That's all.